Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. Today we're going to discuss triple negative breast cancer, and we're very lucky to be here with Dr. Stefan Gluck, one of my personal mentors from the University of Miami. Dr. Gluck has over, over 180 publications on breast cancer and is a professor of medicine here at the University of Miami. So Dr. Gluck, what is triple negative breast cancer? Well, triple negative breast cancer is a very special subset of breast cancer that we have learned about only the last five to seven years. And as you know, apart from staging breast cancer by the size of the tumor and the lymph nodes and whether it involves organs, we also look and into receptors. Mm -hmm. Cancer cells on the surface or in the nucleus or in the plasma have very many proteins and three of them are at the moment being used uh, for the determination of outcome and predicting treatment success. And these three receptors that we are talking about are estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor and HER2 receptor. And if all three are negative, we call it triple negative breast cancer. And it's important because it's associated with negative outcome. And I will tell you later exactly what it means. Okay. Why do African American women have a higher incidence of triple negative breast cancer? You know, in medicine, to, to ask why are usually those questions that are most difficult. Mm -hmm. So I cannot answer exactly why, but it has been described by a friend and colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Olopadi from Chicago, who originally actually is from West Africa that indeed in Western Africa the prevalence of such cancers is extremely high. Mm -hmm. So it's probably related to the fact that many uh, descendants of, and I must say black African American, mm -hmm. there's some distinctions here, that came from Western Africa mm -hmm. are in the United States and their uh, children and children and, 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 uh, and uh, later generations they still carry some genes that may actually increase the risk of breast cancer. And these genes are called BRCA1 or 2, BRCA1 or 2 genes. Mm -hmm. And in this population that you just mentioned, in, I repeat, black African American, <coughs> uh, this gene is in a higher incidence. And if the gene BRCA1 is mutated, then it leads to triple negative breast cancer. I see. What are the some predisposing factors of breast cancer besides the BRCA mutations? Yeah, so BRCA mutations in general are prevalent in the population of the United States in about 4%, give and take, 4, 4.5, 5. Some subsets like Black African American, but also Jewish Ashkenazi and Colombian descendants Hispanics have higher prevalence of this gene. But if the gene is normal, not mutated, then we are not quite sure what predisposes to breast cancer, but there are a few things that do. Number one is actually age. The older one gets, the higher the probability to having cancer, including breast cancer. Second, if the estrogen receptor, one of the three, is positive, then it is obviously depending on estrogen production. So if mm -hmm. a woman has much more than the average estrogen, mm -hmm. both now but also over time, then she's predisposed to estrogen positive breast cancer. Let me explain. If a woman has the menarche very early and menopause very late, then she may have as much as 10 years longer exposure of high estrogen level as the other women. So her risk of estrogen positive breast cancer is higher. Second, uh, estrogen is being produced in a postmenopausal woman by fat tissue. And it's been shown quite impressively that women who have high body mass index, basically being overweight or obese, have higher risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Conversely, those who have less have lower risk. And those women who actually exercise, for whatever reason, we're not quite sure why it, although we have our th theories on it, they also have less risk of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. I see. Would you please explain to our patients what are the different subtypes of breast cancer, for instance, luminal A, luminal B? Yeah. So as I mentioned before, there are three receptors that we are measuring, and we can identify triple positive, triple negative, and then anything in between, one or two or three being positive. Uh, about 10 years ago, a good colleague and friend of mine from Chapel Hill, <coughs> uh, Chuck Peru, 
uh, he published, and he's a pathologist, molecular pathologist, he published a paper that identified that a cluster of genes are very often similar in some type of cancers versus others. Mm -hmm. And these clusters of genes, there are six or seven of them, uh, they are associated with different prognoses and different responses to therapy was identified later. And because he also is a, not only molecular biologist, but he's a pathologist, mm -hmm. he named it after the appearance of the breast cancer as it shows in a microscope. So if it was close to the luminal type of cells in a duct, this type of molecular subtype of breast cancer was called luminal. And if it, if it was uh, more at the basal membrane, he called it basal. Mm -hmm. And then you have subtypes of those. And then you have, of course, of the three receptors, the HER2, the HER2 enriched. More recently, he discovered another new subtype that he calls Claudine Low, which most likely corresponds to the so-called cancer stem cell. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's just take a step back. Assuming that a, that a woman or a man has had a breast mass and the biopsy has come back positive for cancer, what happens next for that human yeah. being? Uh, let me just go back because you mentioned men. Indeed, there are about 1,400 cases a year in this country in males to receive uh, to uh, have been diagnosed with breast cancer it's about 0.7 percent so it is not very frequent but it's not zero once a person has a diagnosis of breast cancer uh, one needs to do a number of uh, many things first of all it needs to be identified what kind of cancer it is and as we said all three receptors need to be measured, then the size of the cancer, and then whether or not lymph nodes on the same side of the breast as the breast is are involved. We call it staging. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, we look into did it spread outside of the breast, outside of the axilla, back to the whole body. So the staging is staged by the so-called T and M classification, tumor size, N number of lymph nodes, and thirdly, M metastasis in the body. Once we have it, then we can identify what is the best treatment. And still, I must say, surgery is the most important treatment because by and large, about half of all patients are cured by surgery alone. Mm -hmm. But there's the other half who are not and who we need to treat additionally over and uh, above uh, uh, surgery. So m doing the proper diagnosis, the proper staging, and then, depends on the stage of the cancer, and the receptor status, we will plan additional treatment. Should one's diet change if they're diagnosed with breast cancer? Um, well, in principle, um, and I'm really criticizing us again, in North America uh, the diet is not the best one could imagine. Uh, the healthy diet is consisting of lots of uh, um, vegetables, uh, fruit, Mm -hmm. uh, and a healthy diet also includes meat, even red meat, but not the excessive amount. Mm -hmm. What we all know, what is not so good, is high fat intake, um, fried food is not good, uh, high sugar intake is not good, but sugar by itself is not mm -hmm. bad. It's mm -hmm. just the relationship, how we balance all these components. So the protein, fat and, uh, and the carbohydrate balance must be perfect and you know I'm not a dietitian but uh, I could still uh, uh, tell you more. Are there any support groups that exist for patients? Yes I published a book a few years ago uh, with a pretty extensive um, uh, number of websites and they are uh, growing. I have a number of patients of my uh, who previously uh, were diagnosed with breast cancer and now are cancer free. Some call it breast cancer survivors. M many women actually do not like this word breast cancer survivor. They are in remission. And uh, I can provide you with uh, these uh, type of uh, websites and help groups, yes. Okay. What about children and close family members of someone who's been diagnosed with breast cancer? Are there any genetic implications, genetic testing? Yes. So, um, as we said, the genetic testing includes not only testing, which in 4% is positive, and in some subgroups, as we discussed before, up to 14%, but still not more. The majority is still sporadic and not genetic. And yet, there are some families where cancer, including breast cancer, is clustered. And the cancers that belong together and uh, include higher risk of breast cancer also are breast cancer itself, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, pancreas cancer, and to a certain extent also lymph node cancer or lymphoma. So these are the most important ones. There are others that are less frequent. So if a patient has family history with these cancers, there's lots of such cancers, 
particularly if these relatives are straight line, meaning father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, and so on, and downwards children, then there is a side. If it's sideways, like sister and cousin, it's less important. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gluck. Uh, we hope that this clarifies things for you. Next video, we're going to discuss the actual treatment of triple negative breast cancer. Thank you.